Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making this witch for Halloween. So I don't know if you can see the pattern that I do on the hat, but it's super duper cool. I know it is so hard to see black. Let me turn my camera light up a bit. So hopefully you can see what I've done. It's super duper neat. So, and it's, it's pretty easy to do. So, um, we're going to be doing that special hat and then this hair all scraggly like this this is woolies woolies brushes out to be really nice and fluffy same as nylon um but this i didn't actually brush thoroughly because i wanted these some of these strands but this is woolies so if you can find this color in woolies i have no idea what the color is um i just have this ball that I know is Woolies because I had it in a specific... I have all my wool in a specific compartment. So I know it's wool. And I know that my wool is Woolies. So... And I think that's by Loops and Threads? I don't know. Woolies. W-O-O-L-E-A-S-E. -E. So you can have to... Or you use whatever you want. But that's what I use for her hair. We do do a little crooked nose with a ward on it as well. The head is built separate and sewn to the body. It was just the easiest way to get the shape that I wanted for this for this chin. So, and then this is just variegated yarn that I used instead of doing stripes, which was, you know, it's involved. So, um... I just wanted something easy peasy for you guys for Halloween, so I just chose this variegated. Um, I'll go through all the yarn and have the quantities on the screen so you know what you're working with. And then these arms I didn't quite sew down. I just kind of sewed them on at the, the shoulder pads. <laughs> and um, so they're movable. And we're also going to be doing a broom, but I don't have... Uh, the broom done yet. I actually haven't made a broom, but I am using a big long matchstick for it. So if that gives you any indication, the reason I'm using the matchstick is I don't know. I prefer the long matchsticks over wire. Wire slippery, but the yarn actually sticks to these wooden matchsticks. So that's why I use matchsticks for stuff unless I need it to bend and then I have to use wire so anyway enough blabbing let's get on to what I used for yarn and how much so the green color that I used for her skin is called guacamole it's by loops and threads the black I used is red heart comfort not super saver it's not as thick as super saver it's a little bit on the thinner side the stockings were made out of this variegated yarn by loops and threads it's called falling leaves and i thought since it was perfect for you know halloween time fall you've already seen this this is the woolies the red that i used for the oh, it's more of a terracotta that i used for her hair you will also need some white felt and safety eyes because that's what I put under the safety eyes to just kind of bring them out. And I used a 4.5 G7 hook and a match stick for the broom, which I haven't even made yet. So we're just going to kind of make that on the fly <laughs> as we go. So we're going to start with black if I can find the beginning. We're going to start building our legs. Our legs are built, our body is built on our legs. Um, this PDF is not in order, so you're going to have to scroll down to find the legs. Um, if anyone else wants to know what I'm talking about, um, I offer free PDFs with a channel membership, so it'll cost you about two, two, two ninety nine a month. 
Your first month, though, you should get 50% off, and then $2.99 the months after. You have access to all my PDFs. So, we're going to start with a chain 9. I want you to use a stitch marker for this. We're going to do seven single crochets back up, but I want you to put a marker on that first stitch. That's my seventh stitch. I have one stitch left. Whenever you see brackets written on my channel, it means the same space, a special sequence, or the count. And you'll know when it's the count. Um, you're going to put five single crochets into this last stitch. And you're going to follow it as it curves. So see how it curves around like this? I want you to follow that curve is we're going to start working on the other side of the chain. So you have to make sure you get into that stitch right next to the to your slip knot after you pull it closed and you're going to do seven single crochets. This will take you right back to your marker. So your next round is going to start with seven single crochets. So after you put this first stitch in, marker that. The stitch is a little elongated, so it'll look like you have one there, but you don't. You have to go over here. That is my seven single crochets. These Next four stitches, you're going to put two single crochets in each. And single crochet back to your marker. So your next round is going to start with nine single crochets. That's number one. That's my nine single crochets. Right at the very top there's five stitches and each of those I want you to do two single crochets. And single crochet back to your marker. So you should have 28 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 28 stitches. So your next round is going to be nine single crochets to start. Number one. 
that's my nine single crochets. And now I want you to do one single crochet decrease four times. So one decrease, two decrease, well, one decrease two times, one decrease three times, one decrease four times. We'll bring you to just about right across from where we're stopped right now. That's my one decrease four times and seven single crochets back to your marker. So your next round is going to be start with eight single crochets. That's eight single crochets, and now we're gonna do the same thing we did before, one single crochet decrease four times. And then four single crochets back to your marker. So that gives you 20 stitches. So your next round is going to start with eight single crochets. So now I want you to do one single crochet decrease two times. And six single crochets back to your marker. So your next round is going to start with, you should have 18 stitches. So your next round is going to start with nine single crochets. That's my nine single crochets. Now I want you to do an SC3 tog. So these three stitches get crocheted together. <laughs> if I can pull through them. And then six single crochets back to your marker. We can start stuffing this now because it's a weird shape now. There, pop that out. That's your toe, so this is the shape that you should have.
I tried to make this foot as craggly as I could for it being a witch. And I made it kind of like a boot style. So we're still going to keep decreasing. So, you should have 16 stitches. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 16 stitches. So your next round is going to start with eight single crochets. That is my eight single crochets. And then we're back to the front part and we're going to SE three tog again. And then five single crochets back to your marker. So you should have 14 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 14 stitches. And then we're going to switch to our variegated yarn. This is my 14th stitch. I'm not going to finish it with black. I'm going to finish it with my variegated yarn. So I like to just tie these in a knot because I don't like to weave because I feel it just leaves one side of your work thicker than the other side of your work. And that knot's going to be inside the doll with stuffing, so you'll never, ever, ever feel it or see it. With your stocking color, whatever color you're using, you're just going to do one single crochet in each of these 14 stitches for the next 12 rows. And I will see you on the other side. So I am done my 12 rows. I'm just stuffing it. Um, so this is my second leg, so I can't fasten off. <laughs> so I'm going to have to stay attached. Uh, go ahead and make your second leg. I'm going to put the pattern on the screen. The first leg, the leg you're doing now with me, you can fasten off. It needs to have a sewing tail because we're sewing this to that. Your second leg, you have to stay attached. We're not fastening off because this is going to get sewn to that and then we're going to continue to crochet to do the body. So go ahead and make your second leg. Make sure that you stuff them to be the same size. And I'll see you right back here. So now that we're, we're back and your legs are done, we can sew these together. Legs, lega is done. So you can decide how you want them sewn together. I don't really care how mine are sewn together, but 
if you have to move this, then you have to move it. But you, I used four stitches to sew mine together. So now that our legs are all tied together, um, so we're going to start the body and we need to get the same number. We're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. I am going to use the stitches that I sewed into and make stitches in there. Um, your magic number needs to be 24. So your next round, we're just sticking with this all the way up. Uh, your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's number two. And then the next stitch gets the increase. So you should have 32 stitches. For the next five rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each of these 32 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So I'm on my last row and I'm going to change to black on my last stitch, which I'm on. So with my black, I'm going to continue to just do one single crochet in each stitch for the next two rows. So that's my two rows. We're going to start to decrease next. So next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. That's number one, number two, and then your decrease. So bring it down to 24 stitches. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and a decrease and I did this only because I needed a really small decrease. So that's why I did that. So it's number one. That's six single crochets and then your decrease. And repeat. So <clears throat> you should have 21 stitches. 
Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of those 21 stitches. Um, we can start putting a little bit of stuffing in this. We, uh, we're going to increase it a little bit, but then we're going to go back into decreasing. <clears throat> I just wanted a skinny waist. If she seems skinny to you, it's only because she's, she's mainly dress. So I made her skinny just so I could flare out her dress without her looking ginormous. Um... Her head is the biggest part of her body. Make sure this part, these parts of the legs are stuffed good right in here. So your next round is going to be done in the back loops only because I need all the front loops for starting her dress part. So, it's hard to see, but these are your back loops. So we're getting into that, because all of these front loops, we're gonna reattach later and we're gonna build the dress the skirt part. So you're just doing one single crochet in each stitch in those back loops. There's no increase or decrease or anything going on. All right, so now we're going to increase back up to 24 stitches. So we're going to do a six single crochet increase because we did that same in a decrease to get down to 21. So we want to get back up to 24. That is six single crochets, and then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. Alrighty. For the next six rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So, that's my six rows. This is what you should have. So we're going to start decreasing to finish this. Now we're not closing, um, well we are closing it up, but we're not, we're putting, not, we're not putting a head on it. We're, <laughs> I'm going to spit it out. We're going to sew the head on. So we're closing this up, but we're just closing it at, like at the neck part. So your first round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's four single crochets and then your decrease. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. So 
So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease, and that's as far as we're going to decrease. So that's my 12 stitches. I'm going to put some stuffing in this. So that shapes it right up to the neck and then we're going to do uh, our next two rows are just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches and that'll be the neck and then um, we're going to fasten off and cinch with a super long sewing tail. Well, it doesn't have to be super long, but a sewing tail to sew the head on. We're going to use this to sew the head on. So when we do the head, we're going to fasten off the head entirely. And then use this to sew the head on. It's just an easier way to do it. Much easier. So, for the next two rows, you're just going to do one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. I'm just going to count to 24 as opposed to using my marker. That's my 24. I don't want to fasten off at the front. So I'm just going to keep going around to the uh, side here. Side back. Fasten off. The sewing tail. Long enough to sew ahead on. If that, if that helps. <laughs> Probably not. Not if you're new, I suppose, or you've never sewn a head on. I've been sewing heads on lately, and it's weird because I don't normally do that, but... Lately it just seems to be the projects kind of... Kind of seem like they need... They need a head sewn on instead of built on. This head's weird shaped, so I had to sew it on uh, because it's got a great big chin on it because it's a witch so once you have it full you're going to go in the front loop and out the next front loop of the next stitch all the way around or if you have a preference on how you close up the top then you can certainly do that So it doesn't really matter what it looks like because there's going to be a head on this. Alrighty, so just pop out. Back here we're going to start to sew. Probably at the back. So she looks funny. She looks too skinny. And she looks, I know. But after we get everything on, she looks like a, I mean, compared to what she looks like here, it's the exact same pattern. So we go from skinny little to not so skinny little. So, so uh, the thing we're going to work on next is going to be her head, but I don't think we're going to sew it on right away only because I want to get the arms and the well definitely the dress started uh, before all that but at least we'll have it done I glued my eyes in because it, it was way easier I use white felt and everything behind them so I just built the head and then I just glued my eyes in with with hot glue if you have an E6000 or E7000 glue, it's probably good. Um, I'm finding in my other videos when I was just using just regular glue, um, they it holds for a while, but then they come out. You know, after um, about six months, the glue starts to break down. That 
school glue just seems to break down about six months in and then your eyes fall out so that's why I changed to using hot glue uh, I ran out of E6000 so so this is my guacamole color it's pretty cool I love the color and I'm not a fan of green but we're gonna start this head with a magic ring of six single crochets Still doing amigurumi. Your next round is going to be two single crochets. <laughs> wow! Two single crochets in each stitch all the way around. If I can manage to get into the first one, I'll work right along with you. Holy cow. Alright, so after the first stitch, Five hours later. Second stitch can go in there. Two single crochets in each stitch all the way around gives you 12 stitches. Alrighty, now that we got through that, whoosh, your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. So this will bring it up to 18 stitches. Next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 24 stitches. That's number one. That's number two. And then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 30 stitches. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. This will bring it up to 36 stitches. Your last increase round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. This brings you up to 42 stitches. All right, so this is what you should have. For the next four rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. So my stitches might look different because I'm using, I'm yarning under, I'm using a different technique and grabbing it like this. Instead of yarning over a yarn, I come from under. 
It's a more tighter and boxier stitch. Sometimes on number of rows like this that we do, I like to do the tighter, boxier stitch. So you can see the difference between yarning over and yarning under. Well, I can here. I don't know if you can on the camera. So these four rows I yarned under. It's just a tighter, boxier stitch, and I much prefer it, especially when I'm on, you know, a number, number amount of rows. So, um, we're going to decrease a little bit and then do another couple of rows. Uh, just trying to shape the face at this point. So, we're going to do five single crochets and a decrease. So you should have 36 stitches. So for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. So your next round is going to be four single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 30 stitches. So you should have 30 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 30 stitches. So I'm going to start stuffing mine because I'm just going to continue to decrease. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. This will bring you down to 24 stitches. So, you should have 24 stitches. Your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 24 stitches. So, your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. And this will bring you down to 18 stitches. I'm going to keep filling it. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So your last decrease is going to be one single crochet and a decrease and this brings you down to 12 stitches.
So that's 12 stitches for the next two rows. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. All right, and go into your next stitch and you can fasten off. So we just need a cinching tail. We don't need a sewing tail. We got that on our body. So finish stuffing this. purposely putting more stuffing back here because I want it to do this. I want it to point up a bit for when I cinch it. So I'm purposely filling back here more than up here. So I just want to keep that little bent chin so the chin bends up so we need to be very polite about how we cinch this so I have a technique <laughs> that I got actually by just using my central and making hats so cinch like you normally would front loops in and out so in the front loop out the next front loop I might lose a little bit of my shape pulling this closed, but I'll try not to. So, I'm going to put my thumb here because that's where the, the bend is. And I want to try to keep that. And I'm going to pull towards me. Okay, so to make this a little bit nicer, I weave in and out around the hole. Cause that's what I do to winter hats after I take them off my centro to keep them looking decent at the cinch but you can do the whatever you want in this instance you don't need to do what I'm doing so that's the best I can make it look I'm still going to pop across and make a knot because you kind of have to. Oh, I just I hate pulling on that part. I'm only going to do one knot. So I still got my finger here to keep the shape of my chin. So I'm just weaving trying to do a good job on the weaving part since I only only put one knot in not that I think anything's going to happen but so that's my witch's face with my little crooked chin so um let's get the eyes ready before we build the nose and then we can kind of stick everything in place to see where we're putting it so grab some white felt and some eyes so on my other one i used oh, this case is so hard to open i used these 10 millimeter eyes and i did them green because i don't know i felt like it yeah it's the only reason it's because she's got a green head, so I felt like doing it green. So, we just need to take our felt. So, 
So, do whatever you want in this instance. I mean, no big deal. You can put something other than white around there. You can put red. You can put black. I'm just going to do the white. So, I'm going to snip a couple of holes. Uh, I think I'm still going to trim a little. So, once you've got them looking the way you want, let me see, let me count my thing. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Between the 12th and 13th row from the chin. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 13. Five stitches in between, maybe six. Uh, oh, five stitches in between. So right about there, 12th and 13th row. I'm not going to do anything with mine until after I make the nose. As long as we put the mouth somewhere near this crooked part, put the mouth in here, we got to accentuate this crooked chin like that so so that's what I would go with right now I didn't put it in the PDF I probably should <laughs> okay funny story I just counted from the top to add this to my PDF to count how many rows from the top and it's 12 and 13 it's exactly the same as from the bottom <laughs> so um, that's probably a good spot for the eyes is midway because we still need to do, do all the hair and put a hat on and stuff like that. So my glue gun is all heated up. So I'm just going to glue these in before we start the nose. Oh gosh, I think I just made a mess. We're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. So, for the first two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. I'm just going to count to 12 because I know where all my stitches are. But if you're not familiar with where your stitches are, then you can put your stitch marker in. After the first row, though, I'm going to tie a knot. This is my first row of six. And I just want to tighten this and make a knot. So, for, to get the crook in my nose, I did three single crochets. You only have six stitches. 
So three single crochets and then I did three half doubles. And that's how I made the crook in my nose. And we're going to do this for three rows. Your last round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch, so that's going to kind of accentuate what we just did. So six stitches. And go into your next stitch and fasten off with a sewing tail so you'll be able to see this better after we um, put stuffing in it I know how the heck you get stuffing in something like this very carefully So you can see where your half doubles are. So we need to just stuff it to, to shape it a little bit better. That might be too much. You don't want to put too much in here because you don't really want to see a whole lot of stuffing. Just kind of push it up into that part. Yeah, I put too much in here. I'm just going to pull some out. That was too much. So, this craggly little thing. Let me get this out of the way. Got sewn on, obviously, with the hook down like that. And then we do the mouth here after. And I know that looks like it's in the way. It, it probably won't be in the way, but anyway. Then we can sew this on after. Oh, I gotta put the wart on. So let's put the wart on. I just, you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I put a wart. I just sewed a wart on. So this is the hook part of my nose. So I just grabbed a piece and just went around and around and around till it put a big lump on it there so now I got my big wart so um you can decide whether to close up this before you sew it on or sew it on open. It's completely up to you how you sew this on.
Once you have this sewn on, I took the same piece of green. And I came back up here in between my eyes. Get in there. I'm going to pop up to the top. I'm going to come across over here. Yeah, let's do it this way. Go under. So you, you're going to see that in a little bit. We're going to pull our eyes in a titch. So I've got one coming up and down here, one going up and down there. And I just want to pinch and pull. So once you pull your eyes in, then you get this sort of a, a deal going on. And then nobody sees where your stitches are here because they get pulled so tight. So we just need to do the mouth and we need to pull that <coughs> down. Excuse me. But you can do whatever you want with your face. You don't need to do all this with your face. But... So it looks like she's got a busted, crooked, cranky nose. I like it. Alright. Grab some black or whatever color you want to use for the mouth. The reason I chose black is, you know, black lipstick. and eh, You know, the whole witch thing. So, in here, where we were holding it before, this is where we want to put our mouth. So I'm going to go in and pop it out where I kind of want my crooked little cranky smile to be. And I'm going to find a spot to go back in and then pop out part way. Down like that. Let's uh move this up a bit and I'm gonna go back a couple back and forth a couple of times and I'm trying to poke through the yarn right here and I'm gonna poke through the yarn again and just pop out wherever I pop out So that's my mouth, and then you can pull to bring that in a bit, as long as she doesn't look like she's smiling too much, but she's got to have that evil grin. See what I mean? So, pull that out a bit. Once you're satisfied. There we go. There's your, there's your witch's face. Um, the only thing we have to do now is just the eyelids with your green. And then we can get on with this. So I've got all this green because I'm doing both my eyelids. And now we got to make cranky cranky pants so I gotta make sure she's cranky looking so just make sure you put a scowl on her it's difficult with these eyes
getting in the way of your needle but everything will go back into shape after you just need to get around get around it with your needle Looks like her and Buddy the Bear were out having a party. But I'm fine with that. So if you're satisfied, that's my witch's face. Straighten her nose out a little bit. It's tough when you can't put a lot of stuffing into this nose so it moves around. That, that's my witch's face. Okay, so um, next we're going to start the dress. We're not sewing the head on or doing the arms. We're going to start the dress. Everything else will fall into place after. The hat's probably going to be the longest part of it. So, make a slip knot, holding your doll upright because it'll make it flare out better. We're going to find our jog. So here where we did the front loops, it's so hard to see because it's black, but here where we did our front loops, we've got this jog because we work in a spiral. So find this lower part of your jog to reattach. I'm going to reattach with a single crochet. It doesn't matter what you reattach with. Whatever it is, you're going to put another one in there anyway. So another single crochet. I'm just going to do one single crochet in each of these front loops all the way around. So I'm on my last stitch. You should have 21 stitches because this was from round 13. So 21 stitches around. Uh, so we're going to increase. We're not slip stitching or chaining. We're going to go right into this. Now this first reattached spot, if you pull that, it goes down so small it doesn't even look like a stitch. It looks like a knot. So this next stitch is the first stitch you made. That's what you're going to get into. And your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So put a marker on that first stitch. That's two single crochets. And then your next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space. This will bring you up to 28 stitches. That is 28 stitches. That's my 28 stitches. And yes, it wants to flip up like this. And when we push it down, it's going to flare better. That's why we're holding it the way we are. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 28 stitches. So your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. You need to put my 
my marker over there. One single crochet in an increase, and I know you're going, what the heck? You're going backwards. Absolutely right. So we're going to go from 7, um, increase by 7, to increase by 14 by doing it this way. So that's one single crochet, and then the next one gets the increase of two single crochet in the same space. And repeat this all the way around for a total of 42 stitches. So that's my 42 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 56 stitches. So that's my 56 stitches. I'm going to tuck this away here before I start my next round. I'm just going to weave back and forth. So I have 56 stitches. For the next 10 rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 56 stitches. And then when we come back, we're going to decrease a little bit and then finish off the dress. So I will see you on the other side. So that is my 10 rows all done. Her <laughs> top of her body is there. We'll pull it down after. So a um, couple more rounds and then this dress will be done. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and a decrease. That's number one. That's number two. And then your decrease. Anyone you want to do, I can. This would bring you down to 42 stitches. So your very last round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. And then you can fasten off. We'll be done the dress. All done. <clears throat> so you can fasten off. I'm going to wave this in. Alrighty, let's pull this down. There we go. So, the reason we decreased and stuff is so that it 
curled under a little bit like that. So now we get the back side of our stitches, which makes the dress look so much better than having the front side of our stitches. There we go. So we can probably sew this head on so that we can get our arms done. So I use this to sew the head on with. And I do a mattress stitch. This is very difficult because the head needs to sit something like this. So it is not the easiest thing to sew on. So, if you're happy with yours, I'm just going to grab a little piece of black here. So, I'm going to make a knot. Because I don't like my stuff opening. Or, you know. If somebody was to pull on my head, nobody's going to pull on my head. Because this is just a display thing for me. Um, so, I'm just going to press this knot really down as close as I can. And then I'm just going to weave... So that gets pulled down and nobody will ever see it. So now she looks really stupid. So now we can get the arms done. So we start with green for the arms because her hands are green. So we're going to start with a magic ring of six single crochets. Or a chain two. Put everything into the first stitch. Your next round is going to be two single crochets in each stitch around for a total of 12. Your next round, just because I needed a re just a really small increase, your next round is three single crochets and an increase. This will bring you up to 15 stitches. So just a tiny wee little increase. For the next four rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 15 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So that's my four rows. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease because we did that um, three single crochet increase. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your decrease. So mine are done in the front loops. So you should have 12 stitches. You're going to put one single crochet in each of those 12 stitches and then we're going to change to black on our last stitch. So 
So this is my last stitch. I'm going to go in and pull up a loop. Grab my black. Finish that stitch with my black. And now with my black, <clears throat> I'm going to do the next 12 rows of one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches. <laughs> Easy peasy to remember. 12 rows, 12 stitches. I will see you on the other side. Um, I forgot to mention, stuff as you go because this is getting stuffed. Sometimes my appendages don't get stuffed, so I thought I'd pop back in here and tell you that this actually does get stuffed. So, that's my... 12 rows. Your next round is going to be a one single crochet increase and we're going up to 18 stitches. That's one single crochet and then your next stitch will get the increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. This is going to give her the puffy shoulders that I wanted for her dress. So if you don't want puffy shoulders, do five more rows of just straight 12 stitches. So you should have 18 stitches for the next two rows. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. That's my two rows. So now we're going to do one single crochet decrease. So we're going to go back to the size we were at. We need to stuff this. Let's stuff this now before we do this de decrease because we're going to go down to 12 stitches and then we're just going to end with one single crochet in each stitch. So we just want to make sure we have enough stuffing. So that's one single crochet, and then your next stitch gets the decrease. There we go. So our, what is going on with my black? So your last round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 12 stitches and then we're going to cinch the top up. Actually, let me check. I think I cinched it. I'm not sure. Let me check my other doll. Yeah, I cinched it up because I just, it's hard to see with her hair in the way. And then I just sewed it on like that so it still moves. So I just kind of went through, attached it with the other arm so that the arm still moved. So that's how I sewed that on. You can sew it on any way you want. But that's how I did mine. So I'm going to fasten off. So I'm going to make this pretty long because I'm going to go through the doll. Not that the doll's that wide or anything, but 
I'm going to go probably back and forth a couple of times. So, finish stuffing this puffy sleeve. So you're going to go in the front loop of the first stitch and out the front loop of the second stitch all the way around. So I don't want my cinch hole to look all big and bulky, so I'm just going to weave around the hole. So instead of making my knots, because I'm sewing with this anyway, I just weaved around the hole and it keeps it pretty flat on top. I'm just going to go down and I'm going to pop out where I'm going to start to sew. Just like that. And then we need another little tiny piece of green. Because we have to make a thumb. So if I've come out, let me get this off. I come out and I'm going to be sewing to this, to the body this way. My thumb needs to be right there. So we just sew the thumb on. So grab a post or grab two if you want. And we're just going to make, leave this hanging out a bit, a series of loops. And you can just keep doing this until you get something that looks like it's big enough to be a thumb. So there we go. We got your your thumb. Mine's just a tiny little thumb. I didn't want it that noticeable. But that'll be where I sew the arm on. So um, your other arm obviously will be this way and the thumb will be over here. So go ahead and make your second arm and I will meet you right back here and we'll get them sewed on. So I'm back with both my arms. I'm just sewing them on. So like I said, um, I didn't sew sew. I just kind of tacked them on there so that they would still move. So I found where I would find like the middle-ish. And I kind of just did a little bit of a mattress stitch, so to speak. I pulled that in. Like that, so my arms are even. Now this one here, I went through to this side and I came back around and popped out just behind the arm. 
So I'm going to go in. And I'm going to meet up in the same hole with this fella. So both my arms are going to be secure. Just make sure they're in the same stitch. You know, I don't, it's hard to see whether they're in the same stitch. So I'm just going to move them again. Just so I'm sure that they're in the same stitch. This black can be hard to see sometimes. So now I'm pretty certain they're in the same stitch. So I'm going to give a little bit of a tug to make sure they're tight. Not too tight that they don't move, but... And then tie these in a double knot. So on the inside they're nice and secure. They're not going anywhere. And on the outside they still move around. So, the puffy sleeves look horrendous right now, but they won't always look like that. Once the hair is on, I'll show you. She's got the same puffy sleeves, but once that hair is on, you honestly, you're not even going to you're not even going to see it most of the time. I mean, you will, but I mean, her hair hangs down like this, right? So, it's not going to be that noticeable. So, the hair, <laughs> we do the hair it's before the hat, so the hair is a lot. I am using this wool, it's Woolies brand, and um, the reason I'm using wool is because it brushes out really easily, even though I don't completely brush her hair all the way out completely. Um, but nylon and anything with nylon in it or wool will brush out a lot easier than acrylic. Now acrylic will brush out. It just, sometimes you have to unravel it to get it to work the way you want. And sometimes it just doesn't. So it all, all depends on the, the brand, I, honestly, I believe. So find something to wrap this around. You want this to be quite um, long. So I'm going to use my eye thing. And I just want you to wrap lengthways because you want long hair. If you want short hair, do it the other way. If you don't have an eye thing, just find something like an iPad mini or... A f your phone, your cell phone, anything that you can wrap. So you're going to obviously have to wrap more than that. I'm just doing it so I can show you how to do the hair. And then you cut it. Take a hook. I almost dropped. Now, some dolls we would do a wig cap, but for her, I don't think it's necessary. So you're going to take your piece, and you're going to fold it in half. You're going to find a spot to go into and pick up a post. You're going to put this on your hook. You're going to pull it through the post, bringing up a loop yarning over and pulling through that loop and then pull it tight and that's how you attach hair So I'm going to continue to add my hair and then I will meet you right back here.
and we'll we'll brush it out together. If you have a wire brush, great. If you don't, I'm sure it'll work if you're using wool or nylons. Oh, before I let you go though, there's going to be a hat on top, so you don't need to do the top part of the head. You just need to do around and down. So this top part, don't worry about it because, you know, and when I say the top part, I mean from the magic ring, one, two, three, four, five. Like I'm on this between the fifth and sixth row. If you just stick to that and, and down maybe four or five rows, that should be good for the hair. So I'm back. Um, I got my one side brushed out as much as I want. It's really straggly and that's kind of the way I want it. I mean, you can brush yours out any way that you want. I'm just using a pet brush. Um, I think to finalize it though, I'm going to be using this brush. So I do use both, but it's, it's a preference for me. So whatever preference you have, so I just gather up all my hair. This is again time consuming. There's nothing there's nothing quick about brushing out hair. So I don't want a lot of it brushed out near the top. Just mainly scraggly at the bottom. So this is the rat's nest we come up with. I put a part in her hair here so that'll be there when the hat goes on and then for my other doll um, the uh, this part I just kind of twisted and swooped up like this when I put the hat on so that it sits there like that so I'll show you when we get the hat done so that's my hair your hair may be very different and that's fine as long as you've got hair and she's not bald <laughs> so let's start this hat so we start with black well the whole thing is black we don't start with black the whole thing is black so we're gonna start with a magic ring of six single crochets So for the first five rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. I'm going to show you the hat before you question <laughs> what the heck. So this is on here. So I don't know if you can see the design in the hat, but we're making one of those hats. So that's what that is. So if you don't want that little doodad on top of your hat, then don't do these five rows. So that's my five rows in total. So now we're going to increase this next round. It's going to be one single crochets and an increase. So that's my one single crochet. Then your next stitch gets an increase of two single crochets in the same space.
Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So now we start this um, pattern, which is super duper easy. Don't shy away from this. This is super duper easy. So in the front loops, and I know this is hard to see because it's black, but this is our back loop and this is our front loop. So in our front loops, we're going to do one half double crochet in each stitch. It, we're only going from single to a half. So you don't have to worry about chaining or anything. So yarn over, go into your first front loop. That's number one. You've got 12 stitches. So in every front loop for the next 12 stitches, you're gonna do a half double crochet. We need to get into these back loops for the next row This is my 12th stitch. So fold this up. And now, when this is small, it is kind of hard to find. But now we're going to go into these back loops that we just left behind. So if we're still kind of working in the previous row. We just share front loop, back loop from one row to make two rows. And that's how we get that look. So flip this up because it's going to stay flipped up. Take this out. And now in your back loop from the row before, you're going to do three single crochet increase. So we go back to singles. That's number one. That's three single crochets. And the next one gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. This will bring it up to 15 stitches. Now when this is small like this, it is hard to find all your loops. Especially at the beginning and the ends. But just do your best. This one does like to kind of, oops, get out of there. This one does kind of like to hide right down in there. But it is there. It's just because we fold this over. So that's why that one's always hard to find. But it's there. So now that we've done that, now that wasn't so bad. It gets easier as it gets bigger. Take my word for it. We're going to increase again. This time using the full stitch. So this one's kind of turned over a bit. So you just make sure you're getting into that first stitch. And you're going to do four single crochets and an increase. So that's number one. That's four single crochets and then your next stitch gets to increase. So two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Everything's going to be two more times. You only do it three times around for every single row. All right. So front loops only for the next row. One half double in the front loops for 18 stitches. So this round will be easier than the last round.
this is my 18th stitch. I'm going to fold this over. And my next round, using the back loops that we just left exposed, I'm going to do five single crochets and an increase. So just make sure you're getting that first back loop. The front, the first stitch and the last stitch are can be difficult to find, especially when we're using black. If you are using black, it could be using red for all I know. That's number one. That's five single crochets. And then your next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and an increase. Make sure you're starting in your first stitch. So we're back to this front loop thing. Front loops one half double in each of these 24 stitches. That's my 24 stitch. I'm going to flip it up. Move my marker. Not that I really think I have to move my marker, but... Our next round is going to be 7 single crochets and an increase. Oh, I found that one easier. Whoops. See, it does really does get easier <laughs> as we go along. So your next round is going to be eight single crochets and an increase. There we go. And now we start our front loops, half doubles, one in each stitch. So that's my 30. Flip it up. Find your first back loop. So this round is going to be nine single crochets and an increase. Okie dokie. So we're going to cut down on the amount we increase at this point because now I want it to be longer and, and not so wide as fast. 
Here I wanted it to kind of widen out really fast, so now we're just going to worry about the length. I mean, we're still going to increase, we're just not going to increase as often. So, whereas this next stitch, or next row, would normally be an increase by what we've been doing, it's only going to be one single crochet in each of these 33 stitches. So that was my 33 stitches and now we go back to the front loops. One half double crochet in each of these 33 front loops. Alrighty, flip this up, take this out, find your back loops, and we're going to do 10 single crochets and an increase. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 36 stitches. The full stitch. Alright. So your next round is going to be in the front loops. One half double crochet in the front loops for 36 stitches. So fold this up, take your marker out into your back loops and this time we're going to be doing 11 single crochets and an increase and this will bring you up to 39 stitches that's number one Alrighty, your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 39 stitches. So your next round is going to be front loops only, one half double crochet in each of these 39 stitches. So your next round is going to be one single crochet in each of these 42 stitches. So your next round is going to be the half double in the front loops.
So flip this up. And we get into our back loops. And we're going to do 13 single crochets and an increase. And this will bring it up to 45 stitches. So your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 45 stitches. So your next round is going to be in the front loops, one half double. Alrighty, so your next round, oh yeah, we're going to flip this up, flip this over, so we get into our back loops, and that's going to be 14 single crochet and an increase. This is the last increase we do for this part of the hat. and after the next couple of rows we're going to start our brim so we're just about done so 14 single crochets and an increase your marker always counts as number one okie dokie your next round is just going to be one single crochet in each of these 48 stitches and then we're going to start our brim of our hat. So this is what you should have and I love what happens at the back here. Can you see that? I love that. It also helps it bend if you wanted to make your hat all curvy like that. Anyway, so for our brim we're going to do um, everything in the front loops again for this round but we're going to use double crochet and we're going to put two double crochet in each front loop so you're going to end up with 96 stitches when you're done and then i want you to slip stitch and chain for the last round only because we've done everything so far working in a spiral um but i want the brim to look like it's even so that's why we're going to do the slip stitching for now two double crochets so after the first double crochet, that's where your marker goes. The second double crochet goes into that same stitch. Using the front loops only, two double crochets in each stitch all the way around. Alrighty, so slip stitch into the stitch your marker was in, you're going to chain two. So this is your brim of your hat, it's all squiggly. 
This last round is going to be one half double crochet in each stitch. And then um, I want you to slip stitch. Um, I'm putting the half double in the same space. I just slip stitch and chain two in, which will keep you at 96 stitches. So I'm all the way back around. I'm going to slip stitch and fasten off. So you just need a weaving tail. We're going to use another piece to sew with because you can't really sew from the brim. <laughs> so we'll have to grab another piece to sew with. So we have to get another piece and sew it on, but this here, I'm going to do the flip. Flip this back, and then I put my hat on. So this, these ridges go at the back. So get another piece of black and then her hair kind of just stays tucked up after you sew it. So I'm just going to get another piece of black. So I'm going to start wherever, probably up here. I have to go into her head as well. So I'm going to come back and try to meet up in the same space as where I started. Cut this off a bit. And I'm going to tie this in a knot. Just be careful how tight you make your first one. Your second one can be super tight. And then you're going to go down into that same space and weave. Oh, I almost lost my hook. So, I'm gonna, I like to fold mine, I know, I'm gonna zoom out a bit. So I like to fold my hat back and down, just like that for the witch's part. And then her hair can down like this. Oh, I got my one eye covered with hair. There we go. So this is a kind of an oversized hat. But she kind of had a little oversized head. So last but not least, you need a matchstick. 
So I just broke off a little bit on the top to make it a length that's good for her. For the broom handle. Um, so you could crochet something to get sewn around this. But I think I'm just going to use this as the broom handle. Because it's wood. It's a big long wood match. So I think you just need broom the broom part so pick any color you want I'm just gonna wrap it around my fingers a few times cut it in half and I'm gonna get an extra piece that'll be to wrap with and I think I think I'm just going to fold this in half. I guess sort of like it was already. <laughs> Oops. I'll somehow put it on here. Tighten my slip knot. So you can pull some of these down, but just be careful you don't pull them out. And then I'll just cut mine to make it look like cut all these loops. Make it look like the top of the with the broom, whatever it is, like that, and then cut this bottom. There we go. That's her broom. So now she has a broomstick. Easy peasy. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.